We're back on the Penn State Icers Hockey Report. I'm Steve Penstone. In week three of January, the Icers took on the Westchester Golden Rams in a home-and-home -home series. The Icers took two from the Golden Rams in the first semester. Let's see how they fared as they went for the season sweep. Freshman Mike McDonough got the first of his three goals on the night in the game's second minute after working hard with Dominic Marone below the Westchester goal line. Mike finds the loose puck for his third of the year. Rich O'Brien's third of the year gave the Icers a 2-0 lead after 20 minutes, just 1 minute and 37 seconds into the second. It's Tom Skakosa beating Matthew Madrazo to pull Westchester to within one. Nearing the six-minute mark, Chris Pronchik uses speed after being set up by George Sott. Randy Japshin with the initial save. Pronchik buries the rebound. His seventh of the year puts the Icers back up on top. Midway through the second, Dan Petrick's point shot results in a goal mouse scramble. McDonough finds the loose puck. He has a wide open net for his second of the night. And less than a minute later, Mike completes the hat trick with a Savardian spinorama backhand that gives the Icers a 4-1 lead. And the Golden Rams looking none too pleased. Late in the second with the Icers on the power play, Dom Marone's shot is stopped, but George Sod works hard in the dirty area for his 11th of the year. It's 6-1 Icers after two. The Icers add one more in the third as a wide open Kurt Collins ends up with the loose puck. He buries his fifth of the year from the slot. The Icers win the opener of the home and home series with a 7-1 romp over the Golden Rams at the ice line in Westchester. The teams head to State College for the Icers' only home game in January. Both goaltenders were tested early and often in a scoreless first period. Matthew Madrazo and Randy Japshin coming up with some big saves for the Icers and the Golden Rams. The outcome would be much closer than Friday's meeting at the ice line when the Icers prevailed by a 7-1 margin. And it was a physical contest despite just one first period penalty. The two teams combining for a lot of penalties in the second period. Four minutes into the second period, Dominic Marone wins the faceoff. Dan Lauk shot, pinballs around in front of Japshin before Paul Daly finds the loose puck and buries his 11th of the year. Icers go on top, one to nothing. So the Icers pick up a win at the ice line in Westchester and then came home for their only home game of January and won that one as well, upping the season record to 4-0. Now, the Icers outscored the Golden Rams 26-9, and it should be noted that they won those two games in January without the services of both Tim O'Brien and Eric Steinauer, as well as head coach Scott Balboni, all three of them with Team USA at the World University Games in Turkey. As a result, a lot of guys got into the lineup, got some playing time, and really stepped up their games, including freshman forward Michael McDonough, and freshman goaltender Matthew Madrazo. They were simply outstanding against the Golden Rams. Coming up next, we'll take a look at the weekend series at the University of Delaware. As I mentioned earlier, that is the site of the 2011 ACHA National Tournament. You're watching the Penn State Icers Hockey Report. I'm Tim O'Brien, and you're watching the Penn State Icers Hockey Report. So what was it like coaching the national team? Uh, it was a great experience. I mean, it's always a lot of fun when you uh, have the ability to coach uh, that level of player, and uh, certainly it's a, it's a great experience to be able to go overseas and to see that level of hockey and that talent level that the, those players have over there, as, uh, as well as the, how hard our guys competed. Uh, you know, the guys wearing the USA jersey competed extremely hard, not just our Penn State guys, but also uh, everybody representing the ACHA. And, uh, uh, you know, we had a great showing. We ended up finishing sixth overall in the tournament, which was the highest ever for the U.S. But uh, we're continuing to move the program further and further along, and uh, hopefully we'll continue to be successful in the future. So uh, what was your, your experience like playing for the national team? Yeah, it was a great experience. I mean, it was uh, you know, a great opportunity to go overseas and to go to Turkey and, you know, meet those guys and, you know, get to hang out for two weeks and, you know, just playing hockey every day and, and representing your country. I think it was, uh, you know, a great experience. It's something that I'll never forget. Would you say it's easier coaching a team that is not is per se less talented and has longer experience together? <clears throat> or more talented and less experienced? Well, I mean, I think it's, you know, it's always great to have a talent level with you. And, uh, you know, we had we had quite a few guys who had a lot of talent. I think 
Um, not that it can't be done. I think we did a good job of gelling together and guys accepting roles. I think it's just a little more difficult um, to get that across to guys up front because they're not used to. Some guys have never PK'd. They're only on power play. You know, some guys uh, are on everything on their team. They run nothing on the world team. So, um, you know, I think it's always great to, to coach guys with talent. And, and uh, um, you know, I certainly wouldn't say that uh, that I would turn down talent, but uh, it's just getting them to gel together is a little difficult. Did you find it difficult going from being the quote unquote star of this team, you know, most points, um, one of the biggest faces, going to a perennial all star team, per se? Yeah, I mean, obviously the egos are there with, you know, the 22 guys that we took. You know, everybody's the best player on each team. So it was kind of hard to, you know, at first to, you know, you know, whatever line you're going to be on, and, you know, maybe you're, you're a power play guy, you're not playing over there, you're, you know, doing different roles. But I think it was just, uh, you know, since I had the opportunity to go over there, it was kind of just, you know, do whatever the coach says and, you know, whatever they put me, just try to make the most of, you know, you know what I could bring to the team. Great. And um, what was your role with the team? Uh, I was the first assistant coach this time. And was this your first year of coaching there? Or? Uh, it was the second time. They have a progressionary program. Uh, the first time you go, you're the second assistant coach, which I went two years ago to Harbin, China. Um, this next time you go, you're the first assistant coach. And then uh, the following time, you're the head coach when you would go. Great. So, um... I guess the question next is, uh, would you do it again and in what capacity? Uh, yeah, I mean, I would love to. I mean, they've asked me to be the head coach in 2013 to go to Mirabar, Slovenia, and coach the world team. So um, I'd love to. Um, you know, right now Penn State's obviously in, in flux, but for a good reason. So I don't know exactly where I'll be in 2013. And uh, uh, as that shakes out, I've, I've, like I said, I've already talked to USA Hockey. Uh, they've offered me the position to do that. Um, and obviously I would like to if I'm in a position here at Penn State to be able to do that. But we just won't know that for a couple of years. Great. And... Um how did you fare playing over there, point-wise, and anything like that? Uh, I think uh, when it was all said and done, I had three goals and assists in six games, so you know, it was pretty good. I think uh, I sent an email out, you know, recapping all the games. And I think it was third on the team in points, so it, it was a pretty good, uh, you know, pretty good turnout for you know. I, from the start, I was a little shaky, and you know, once I kind of settled in with the competition, it got a little better. And how does this differ from coaching in the ice cream <coughs> and collegiate hockey? Well, I mean, it's different because obviously it's just a one-week tournament type setup so you're not with guys for you know eight months at a time and you don't know all their idiosyncrasies in and out uh, it's just a week-long tournament so uh, you're trying to put lines together and matchups together very quickly and, and uh, without knowing a lot of the chemistry between the guys and uh, obviously with an all-star team it's very hard to quickly get to get guys to gel together and accept their roles and uh, every player we brought there was one of the best on his team uh, in his own right so getting them to come together and play in a team aspect is very difficult in that short manner of time and uh, I think that's one of the biggest difficulties in, in coaching a world team. All right, so can you describe the feeling you experienced when you heard that you were picked for this team? Yeah, it was, uh, you know, it was, it was unbelievable. I got the call and, you know, couldn't believe it. I, you know, didn't have the best tryout and, you know, thought my chances were pretty slim, but, you know, the coach said that, uh, you know, he liked the way I played and, you know, what I could bring to the team and obviously, it, you know, I was extremely excited and, uh, you know, fortunate enough to get the call when I didn't think I was going to. Mm -hmm.